right. So uh, our project was a design of a steerable two by two antenna array for 5G sub six gigahertz communication. And uh, I'm Nick and I'm presenting with Joe. And yeah. So I'm just gonna go through the agenda for what we're gonna be presenting to you guys today. Um, so we're first gonna go through our introduction, which we've pretty much done. And then we'll go through some antenna theory, uh, beam forming and other concepts. Then we'll do our project overview, uh, go into a bit of Butler matrix then our software and hardware components, and then just a summary and conclusion, and then some questions. All right. Oh, this thing's gonna change on me. So we're gonna start with the introduction. So antennas are a type of, well, antennas, terminals, aerials are all any type of transductor that can send or receive electromagnetic waves. They're very simple in structure, or they can be very complex. They come in a variety of sizes and shapes, and they're an essential component in the telecommunications industry. Um, to the right, we have a couple examples of antennas. We have one on a classic t television. We have a Yagi antenna right here. And then we have a car with a regular antenna sticking up. And then for a little giggle, we have, a, we have an insect with some antennas. These are, all, these are used in a different way. They don't transmit any um, electromagnetic waves. However, they're used for olfactory. A good example with another biological component would be the eyeballs with the rods and cones which take visible light and translate it into colors. So talking about a little bit about antenna theory, all EM waves propagate and travel at the same rate. And the um, information that we can get from these waves is just how we interpret it, interpret them. So here to the left, we have, we have a classic wave that is made of many components. Um, the, the reason why we bring this up is that this is the basis of antenna theory is that the waves that we see that are all around us, we can tr we can transmit and receive, and then we can break them down to components and try to translate them into data. So, and this is all done using the Fourier transform or the various data techniques that are used by different companies. So, uh, I like this picture on the bottom left corner because it's a little more of an artistic representation of a Fourier transform. Here we see the um, the picture, the classical Renaissance painting of woman with pearl earring earrings being being done with the Fourier transform. Um, I don't know how many circles there are. This is denotes how, uh, what n this is. But as you can see with the, the greater amount of circles we get up to, we get a more finer, clearer picture. And, the, and using these methods and using the um, different frequencies, we can establish different ways that companies can send signals. So in the internet industry and telecommunications industry, these um, broadbands or these sections of frequencies are highly contested and oftentimes regulated. So certain companies can use a certain frequency range and they have to, these countries, these companies have to play nice and try to make sure they don't uh, step into other bounds and things like that. So now we're gonna go on to beam forming and other concepts. Depending on the size and shape of the antenna, the transmissions will vary. So. Uh, to the right, we actually have a radiation pattern for a dipole antenna. It's a classic donut shape, which doesn't really have a direction. It kind of goes in all directions, but some antennas will have a, a, a clear directivity and we can see what direction it's going. And the radiation pattern is just a plot of the, the, the power and the emissions. Uh, also, we can utilize this this radiation pattern and all of these this directivity to use to create beams, which is the concept of beam forming. So going to the right, we have a series of antennas. They're all prop, they're all propagating and emitting different things, and we see that as these beams are being prop oh these emissions being propagated or emitted, that there's an area of high convergence. This area of high convergence creates a stronger beam. And this stronger beam is where we're going to make a better, a better or stronger signal, which we can use for a directivity. So another important thing to consider is that although beams do travel out of antennas and they might go in all directions, they might become weaker over time. And there's many things in the environment that might slow them down or just block them. So using this beam forming with a direction, we can actually steer the beam for certain locations and we can not waste power or energy. So we're gonna talk about our project overview. So in our project, we're designing a 5G MIMO antenna array. And 
what that is, is a MIMO antenna is a multiple input, multiple output. So each antenna is getting a different input, well, it's getting an input, and it's got probably getting its own output. And as these antennas emit, we're going to use their different frequencies and their waves to create these beams. So we see here in this, pod, in this overview picture that there's three beams. And our antenna, our goal is just to have one beam. This is just different scenarios of the beam being steered in different directions. And we see the tilted beam. Another component, well, another benefit of having this beam steering is that we don't have to have servos that tilt our antennas. So that will, that will get rid of unnecessary cost and maintenance as we, as we don't have to worry about that. And then below we have the beam steering circuit, circuits and the algorithms that will send the waves to make sure that we have the beams. And in our project, we are, we've used um, MATLAB for the software component, and we use FICO for the hardware design component. So probably the main star of the show is, well, two things. We're using a Butler matrix architecture. It's an older architecture that was first proposed in the 1960s. The design of the architecture uses an N by N antenna array with using a limited amount of components. These components mainly involve the input delays and the, and the quad, quadricore hybrid couplers. The quadricore hybrid coupler is probably one of the most important aspects of the design. In the quadricore cup, coupler, there's two input ports and there's two output ports. With these two output ports, the input port goes through and the through port just transmits the signal as is. And then the other port will give it a directivity or a, a phase shift. So here we're seeing a negative phase shift of 90 degrees. And another interesting thing about the hydrogen coupler is that if we actually, instead of inputting in the first terminal, we can input into the fourth terminal, we can have a reverse. So this will be the throughput and then this will be the phase shift. And by utilizing this design, we can actually reduce components, which makes our design a little bit cheaper, which is a, a, an added benefit and can help. And although we're making a very small antenna array, this design can be help used to utilize to realize like larger systems where that can be implemented. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the software component, which is my area. So by using MATLAB's phase array toolbox, we can actually create our antenna in MATLAB and do simulations. So to the right, I actually have, well, this is the creation box where we're doing a URA, which stands for a uniform rectangular array. And to the right of that, we actually have the radiation pattern where we see the beam. Now, these, these two designs are not optimized. So and another useful tool we can use in MATLAB is called is the optimize function, or we can use phase array toolboxes optimization and to array optimize, optimizer, which is, allows us to optimize our, our antenna array to get the most, to get the well, get the best radiation pattern we can see. This is the focus of our first semester. Well, not our second semester. In our first semester, the focus for the software component was to, design, was to demonstrate beam forming. So down here to the, the bottom right, we have a signal with no beam forming, and then we have signal with beam forming. So the goal of this was to, to prove that with, with software, we were able to pass on specifications that we could create a beam. This was done in MATLAB Simulink, which where we were taking a random noise signal and then passing it through some filters to try to get a beam to, to occur. And we can actually move this beam around. We can put it to the 250 mark or the 50 mark. But in this example, we just have it in the middle with that 150. All right, so I'm gonna go over the hardware component of our design. Um, so we designed a two by two antenna, as you guys know. And uh, this is a, the way we did this is with a software called Altair Fico. In which case we use a CAD, it's kind of a CAD software. It also has a post CAD thing after it runs the simulations. So the simulations are on the bottom left here, or the bottom right, sorry. Um, and they show the radiation beam going straight up and then also the radiation beam steered, as Joseph talked about in the previous slides. So um, yeah, we used Fico for doing that. And uh, there will be four patches on the, in a two by two layout, as you can see uh, here. And this is the most efficient layout that we could come up with because it's what how Butler matrix typically works um, for beam steering. So by applying the 90 degree phase shift to the coupler or through the coupler at each port, 
Um, in this case, it'll be on the left or the right two ports. Uh, it steers the beam to the left. And if we want to reverse that steerage, you would just apply the 90 degree phase shift at the left two ports and the beam would steer in the opposite direction. Um, so that would demonstrate our basically out like our phased array steering that we were trying to do in the first place. And um, yeah, it's pretty like not super complicated setup, but also it requires just a few couplers to do and we don't have to move our antenna around at all to achieve the radiation pattern that's steered. It's pretty simple. Um, and just summary, we're designing a two by two antenna array uh, writing a beam steering algorithm in Buckmore matrix. And then we're gonna merge our hardware and software together and then evaluate, troubleshoot and fine tune our project. So although we are designing a small antenna array, designs and research in this field are helpful in realizing larger systems. So this could be used in a very large system, like array of antennas, more than just two by two. And the overall goal is to design an efficient and cost-effective antenna array that does not use much power. And with the growing number of mobile users and increasing uh, connectivity in our world, it is vital that we find these search for solutions for the general public as other facets in the television patient's uh, industry. Do we have any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, oh, yeah. so this, this is I'm so glad I just joined. Um, oh, hello, fine. everybody. Hi. Uh, no, um, I, I work in the 5G area, Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. I used to be a Princeton section guy. Mm -hmm. um, so this is very nice. Is this part of your capstone project or? What exactly? Oh, this is our senior project. Yeah. So I guess okay. it would be our capstone in a way. Right, right. So which specific frequency you are applying here? I mean, in terms of, you know, 5G, you have low band, mid band, high band. We're applying uh, at 2.4 gigahertz. That's our central okay. frequency. Okay. Okay. How does it work with other like millimeter wave type, which is, you know, 28, 39? Oh, um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? 28. I mean, how does it work with the other frequency range? Uh, um, we've only to really test around 2.4 for the most part. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if we, I can um, answer that uh, for you guys, uh, I'm not the advisor for this group. But how you do I? Uh, Ashutosh. I'm doing okay. I just arrived in New Jersey. I just um, came to, uh, we have moved to Maryland. <laughs> thank you for joining us, but the design will work at any frequency. Okay. You got to okay. scale the antennas, obviously, at 28 uh -huh. gigahertz, but this patch design works very well. It'll it work perfectly well at, at 28 as long as it's scaled. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay.